and therefore, based on the spirit of Nairek, which is the most formidable, the most important body, distinguished body of Christian and Muslim leaders in our country, we believe in that spirit of Nairek. We thank you most sincerely and pray that we will continue to sit together and walk towards attainment of peace, stability in our great country. Like the co-chair said, it's a very trying time for our country in Nigeria. We must double our efforts to continue to pray for our country while we try to take steps in ameliorating the very terrible situation facing us, which we brought to ourselves because nobody came down to bring these issues that disturb us so much. Nobody forced us to accept the ways and uh, manner such people want us to live. So it's our own fault. And the first thing is, when you accept your fault, you try to see how do you work to tear that fault and become a better person. To you know you are wrong, the 50% solution to the problem, the next 50%, you have to wake up, get up, and solve the problem. So we are in our problem. Like I said, we are food soldiers. We keep on talking to our political leaders who are the leaders of our great country. We don't have any other means to force them to do what we think is right. But we continue talking. We will command respect of millions and millions and millions of Nigerians in the Christian and Islamic force. So let's continue to work together. Let's continue to sit together. Let's continue to dialogue. I'm a total believer in dialogue. And nothing will change my mind because my religion teaches me to always dialogue. And I believe no problem is big enough not to be resolved when you sit down and talk. Because even worse, our fought to bring peace. So if you know you can bring peace without fighting war, then why do you have to really take up arms? Peace is the most important aspect of our lives because without peace, you cannot even worship Almighty who created you to worship Him. And we have seen it. There was no peace when we had COVID-19 last year. Our churches were closed. Our mosques were closed. Even in Ramadan, where we used to go and do our tafsir, we were not able to accept online. That was a year ago. But by constant prayer to the Almighty, things eased up. But things, it just eased up. It didn't clear. COVID is still there. And we have to continue telling our followers, but not to observe the regulations are set down by the authorities that know better than us. So as I said, I believe in dialogue. Let's continue And that's why we're here. The other people keep on saying, what is the use of Narek? When every day you hear missiles, very strong missiles sent from one religion to the other by the secretaries or the media officers of the two major bodies not from the co-chair, not from me or not from the current president. Whether we know or we don't know, such messages have been sent. And I think they are, they are of high concern to other people who knew how Narek was formed by the two major religious leaders in the country. I've said it so many times and I will not get tired of repeating it. Christians and Muslims in Nigeria came together on their own accord. Not, it's not a government 
organization. If tomorrow we decide to stop meeting direct or at direct level, we will do so. Government cannot force us. But because we believe in dialogue, we believe in talking to one another, we believe in discussing issues to bring peace, we continue this meeting. And I want to assure you, on our part, we will continue this dialogue at direct level. No matter the heated debates out there. But I believe when we're going to close session today, there will be heated debates. But we will be the better for it. Because sometimes due to misunderstanding, sometimes due to ignorance, sometimes due to mischief, certain things are held out either through normal media or social media, which always carries a lot of negative news as front page news or breaking news. But that's what they are looking for. Because as we came together willingly, without any question, continue to meet. And I want to thank the government of the Federation for all the efforts. I know the LDA would have been here personally, but the Secretary decided to fix this meeting on a Wednesday when there is a Federal Executive Council meeting. So the failure of the SDA to come personally is due to the Health Secretary's decision to fix this meeting today. But he has been heavily represented by the pamphlet whom we work on latterly. Please extend our uh, greetings and respect to the SDF and thank him for all the efforts they have been putting in and urge him to continue to put more that we are working with him, we are working with the government, we are working with everybody to bring peace to our country. When I was a participant at National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies as a economy before I became September 2006, my thesis was on religious extremism as a national security problem. I you know months later I will be on this uh, position or in this position. And what I found out we'll discuss later at our close session. But what I wanted to say here is when I became Sultan, I tried to modify that paper so as to bring it out and print thousands and thousands of copies and distribute. That paper is so important because I was just reading it yesterday and I realized all the things we have been talking shouting about, including what the company just said now about equipping the armed forces very well, about intelligence gathering and things like that were all captured in that paper in 2006, May. In fact, this is why in May, when I put that paper together. So we'll discuss it, but unfortunately when putting it together, my team missed the whole chapter and they are still looking for it. But I look at it and see how we can I get it out. And we'll print that small booklet of about 60, 70 pages, because removing all the other data and whatever will make the uh, paper handy enough for you to carry around in your, in your bag, so that whenever you're traveling, you can continue reading it, and you see exactly what you've said before we came this way. So I will have not changed in what you have been saying from time Almighty Allah brought us to this seat. That's 14 years ago, 14 and a half years ago today. And we thank you, most sincerely. And same thing too, I'm bringing this so people to know what we've been saying, what we've been doing, it's not just an accident. Most of the things we've said before today, before now, before these current security challenges we are facing, were well, there Richard. I was at Harvard University in US as the guest speaker at an annual lecture series the Oles Hall at the Divinity School. And I spoke on Islam and, work, and development in West Africa. And what exactly what I want to quote there in that paper, it was in 2011, exactly 10 years ago. What I said then was there's no conflict between Islam and Christianity. I want to correct it. There's no disagreement between Islam and Christianity. But there's an agreement between a Christian and a Muslim. And this, this is a fact. 
So if a Christian and Muslim have problems between them, don't bring that yes, the whole Muslims and Christians have problems. That's what you should look into. If I have problem myself and can't present, let two of us sort it out. But others should not join in and say, let's, let's fight for Islam, let's fight for Christians. No. Because we have seen so many times, so many times, so many times, so many places where religion was used negatively to cause confusion. And the end result, thousands and thousands of lives massacred. Innocent lives, let me use the word innocent lives, who don't even know what is happening. That's what you, what you must avoid. Let's not use religion to satisfy the greed of our political leaders, of our business leaders, and other people that don't wish us well. People keep on talking about war. There will not be war in Nigeria. Who is going to fight who? You have people, you have ethnic nationalities in your countries, you have married, intermarried. Who is going to fight who? So all these noise people are making, trying to draw attention to what they can get out of this country, Nigeria. And if you look at them, they're in minority. In this country, there are excellent people that mean well for common man, for humanity, and that's what God tells us to do. The two major religions all preach that we must love our neighbor. And that neighbor can be anybody. I didn't see why they say you must kill your neighbor. I've not seen any. So let's not be so negative in our handling, in our dealings with such things. Last Friday, there's a very good article in the Nation newspaper. May 7th, not last, not last year, well, not last week. On Friday, May 7th, there's an article in the back page of this paper, of Nation, the Nation. What we owe each other. My photograph and that of Camp President were at the back. One, let me see what I can Shebun Baide Gesi. He's an elder statesman. He's not a young journalist. He's been there for a long time. He wrote an excellent article on what we owe each other. I believe all Christians and Muslims should get that article and read it well. It's just what we're here for, what happened. What country is say, what I'm saying now. Now, what some of that distinguished journalist for thinking out of the box at this time to put his thoughts on paper for people to read? Let's read and work with that, with what we have read. But it's a simple thing. It's a whole back page of the nation newspaper. Maybe I'll tell uh, the, the little secretary to get it, maybe print it out and send it to our boxes because it hits the nail right on the head. And that's exactly what we are discussing today. And I want to thank him. I wish I could be a meeting one of these days uh, to uh, thank him and pray for more strength on his hands, for his pen to write more of such very decisive comments on, our, on the affairs of our nation. So I want to use the opportunity once more to thank all of us for coming. Let's not give up. We will not give up. We will not give up. Because when we have challenges, definitely, it's normal in life. People fight. Husband and wife fight. But what do they do? They will make up. If they don't make up, the husband will go hungry. And the wife too knows what, what's next. But when they do make up, they will be okay. When they make up, they will be peace in the home. Tomorrow, something else might come up. They don't have food in the house. The wife will tell the husband, go and bring your money. If the husband doesn't bring your money, there's trouble in the house. Then somehow, somewhere, they will make up. So that's how I see our situation in this country, that issues like this will keep on coming up. And I believe we should confront such challenges very strongly. There's anger in the land, yes. We should be managing our anger. But not all anger is 
sort of deadly. But some could be deadly, yes. But anger is very, very important for as religious leaders because our people. If tomorrow they say it's for time, so angry and say we're not talking about anything again, then there will be a problem. The same thing with the town president. The same thing with the Fubara Emmanuel. The same thing with Ali Ahima. So we were leaders at such important levels. You can be provoked. But the bottom line is that as an elder statesman, as a religious leader, do not allow that profession to get into your head to lose that of Almighty to you as a religious leader. And that's why you know the difference between a good religious leader and a bad one. The bad ones go to the market, make money. The good ones stay in the church and preach the gospel. And the good ones too stay in the various mosques and preach to people. Even though I used to tell my colleagues, they make a lot of money from tithes, but they say tithes belong to God. Our friends, two of us. So let's not get too angry. Because the more you get angry, the more you lose your common senses. And when you lose your common sense, then you can do anything. You are somebody who is drunk. You can do anything. When he's sober, he says, I didn't do it. But you have committed that atrocity. There are so many examples I could have given you in the Islamic world about being drunk and committing bad things. But suffice to say, since uh, our Northern States uh, Governor's Forum Chairman uh, walked in, uh, a man of peace, he came at the right time, even though he missed a lot of things that I've said, but we will discuss. It's one person that I have seen him working very hard to bring peace and sanity to the state, to the flatter state, by the work that he's doing. But I was one of the guests at one program he did. He created for Muslims and Christians to come together. I think that's a forum to be sustained, should be used by all governors. You see how can no matter how small portion of the Christian or Muslims are in those states. Bring everybody to feel I belong. It's my own state. It's my own government. Whatever I do here is for the state. I think when we do that, a lot of understanding. Because we need to understand these issues more and more. So let's not get angry with ourselves. Let's laugh. Things are bad, but they are not so bad for us not to laugh. Because they say laughter is the best medicine. So let's continue to work with one another. Let's continue to see how we can bridge the gap. Those who are very really angry, I am calling on them. Don't be angry with what you have said, but you can be so confident. There are two different things. To be confident and to be angry. When you are angry, you don't even know what is really, what's the real situation. You can't get concerned about it. That's the fact. But when you are concerned and your head is level, straightforward, you can do a lot of things. That's why I take this long to make this short speech. I will not talk about, I took this long to make this short speech. And like the camp president said, if nothing is done, to consume one of us. And when it consumes all of us, who have no place to, to stay. We have to work to ensure that we don't allow this insecurity to consume all of us. As religious leaders, we must always be concerned. Whatever happens in the country, people are looking up to us. A lot of people are looking up to this meeting. What are we going to say? What are we going to do? There are two issues that I want to bring up. Because these are very important things. Because we have this is a public forum before we go into cross session. There are media chairs here. And of course, there's a governor of the whole 19 northern states here. The issue of judiciary union that have been on strike for two months. I don't see a country where you close down the justice system for two months, no disposition of justice, and people don't seem to get worried. Whatever can be done to intervene to resolve the dispute 
between the judiciary workers and the judiciary itself should be done. Now that should offer itself, you know, to come in to dialogue. What is the problem? Because we don't even know the issues, because it's not our field. What? Because I don't know. The issue is the parliamentary workers union. The whole House of Assembly in the country are grounded too. But the workers are also on strike. Why? Because they all think they want autonomy. The houses of Assembly want autonomy from the executive in the general state. The judiciary want autonomy, also financial autonomy. And that's the issue. So how can we as religious leaders come in and say, look, Call these leaders, let them talk with you, let them hear what they have to say. And most of all, the most recent is the coordination. It's very important. I will end up by saying, unlike the other knows, I will quote from the sermon last Friday at uh, Saudi Arabia. The Imam said, Allah knows what you want, what you need, what you deserve at what time and at what place. Trust him and his decision as they are the best for the for his creations as he knows why we don't. Thank you very much for listening. What's the love on everyone?